The big take in, in the investigation identifies a number of countries, many of them uh, areas of conflict where this is happening. Illegally obtained Starlink ground receiver being activated. Bring us the details. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Starlink's growth around the world has made it, you know, an invaluable resource for, you know, regular people, myself and others who just need high speed Internet. But it's also because of how easy it is to use and, and its widespread availability has, um, you know, fallen into the hands of, of you know, in, in war torn regions um, where there's no operations agreement between the, the company Starlink um, and, the, and the government there um, and also on, in places where that are under U.S. sanctions, um, such as Venezuela and other nations. Eric, I want to point out to our audience that SpaceX did not respond to our requests for comment on the story. And of course, they were invited to, to comment and to, to discuss it. They did say back in February that were they to obtain any knowledge that a Starlink terminal was being used by a sanctioned or unauthorized party that they'd investigate the claim and then take actions to deactivate that terminal. In our reporting, do we have a sense of, of how pervasive this is, the, the scale at which the illegal use is happening from a numbers perspective, or is it limited to specific case studies in those countries? I mean, that was one of the most fascinating revelations for us is just how widespread this is. I mean, it's being used all around the world. Um, and, you know, Starlink and, and SpaceX and Musk, you know, have said to, at various times that they, they um, you know, will, when a case is brought to their attention, they will investigate it. And if confirmed, they will shut down. They can, you know, we've talked to experts who said they can use geolocating, you know, whenever a, one of these terminals is activated, they can literally see it. And so they, in theory, could turn it off. It raises questions about, um, you know, how effective they are at this, where, uh, you know, Musk is this mercurial figure, his allegiances are hard to um, ascertain, um, and certainly uh, it raises questions about what who, who has the power to do this and what authorities are going to get involved, whether that's the U.S. government, whether that's local authorities on, on the ground in these places, such as Yemen, Sudan, Venezuela. You know, there's been um, un unconfirmed reports um, of soldiers in Russia using it, um, which, of course, is under U.S. sanctions. Yes. So um, but to your point, this this is a widespread um, problem, and, a, and it makes Starlink into this geopolitical wild card that, um, it, with very uncertain use around the world. But it's also becoming an increasingly important part of the SpaceX business model, right? I've done some reporting, which you've edited over the last year or so, about the growth of the Starlink business. Just outline its goals and where the growth kind of lays right now for space-based or con satellite constellation-based internet. Starlink is absolutely vital to Elon Musk's business plan. It's it's going to be a huge percentage of SpaceX's revenue. Musk has said that the launch business itself is capped, but he envisioned Starlink could be a thirty billion dollar a year business. The point of it initially was to you know have sort of financial underpinnings and growth to help Musk achieve his lifelong dream of getting to Mars with the Starship rocket. So a, a crucial funding source for the company, um, and its its growth has has mirrored that.